we can see progression throughout the history of the universe. So this is a map, a funny looking map, but it's a map of the background radiation that we see in every direction in the sky. So this is the full sky looking in every direction, but, but projected onto a plane. And what we're seeing is the leftover radiation that was predicted would be there if our universe had a very energetic and precise beginning point in time. Now, we've heard so much of all of our lives about the Big Bang, so this may not seem like a big deal, but a few decades ago, this was a big debate about whether our universe actually had a beginning or was in, in a steady state uh, forever. So the, one of the predictions was if there were a, if there had been an energetic beginning to the universe, there should be leftover radiation everywhere in space, cooled because of the expansion of space, but there, uh, even so. We could say, you know, what caused the planet to be here? Well, we can say, well, God did it. Well, okay. But, you know, more scientifically, that would be expressed by understanding the mechanisms that brought the planet to form. Okay, then you say, well, who, what caused those mechanisms to work? And you can work your way all the way back, right, to, in our universe, the Big Bang. And so we're trying to understand what caused the four forces, the four fundamental forces to exist in the first place and trying to unite them and all that kind of thing that string theorists are trying to do toward the beginning of our time. And then the question always was, well, what set off the Big Bang in the first place? And so you could say, well, that was God. Okay, but there might be now, we think there might be, you know, multiple universes popping up. This is sort of now beyond what you can measure scientifically, but you can do it mathematically or you can do it in, in your imagination. So then, you know, I, I, I'm a little hesitant by just pulling in God to answer the things that we can't yet scientifically explain because that's the classic God of the gaps argument that you invoke God for the things you can't explain scientifically. And I would rather invoke God for the things that we can explain scientifically because I think that means that God did a really good job at you know, making things work. When you get back to you know, fundamental first cause, why is there anything at all? Um, there I think you have a little more valid uh, uh, approach of thinking that there might be divine purpose, divine cause, this kind of thing. I think that's, that's very appropriate. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.